going to add to my fun spring wardrobe with this adorable, super fast little pattern we're going to do with this Cynthia Rowley. It's a Simplicity 9012. And look at it. It's just a raglan sleeve. I made a lot of these. It's sort of like a little peasant top, but this one, uh, it comes in like a romper style a shirt or a little mini dress. And I'm going to do the dress in, look at this lovely border print. Because I'm choosing to do it in a border print, when I cut my pattern pieces out, instead of going with the lengthwise grain, I'm going to turn them into what the crosswise. This is just a cotton, a quilting cotton type fabric, nice, a nice weight. I've already pre-shrank it. I surged my edges, washed and dried it like it's going to get washed and dried from here on out. The only other thing you need is thread and one inch elastic, really straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and head to the cutting table and just show you how we lay this out to get the border print where I want it for the dress. Now this dress has a four and a half inch hem in it. So it's nice and deep. But if you don't want the dress to be this short, so this I would consider almost a tunic, not a dress for me. So if you want it to be an actual dress, you can put a little narrower hem in it and it's already um, ready to go. You don't have to do any lengthening, you just do a narrower hem much in there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it out for the um, adding those four inches, give me a little extra length, and probably put a little bit narrower hem in it. And I do like the little three-quarter sleeve. I also won't be wearing it off the shoulder. I can just tell you that's just not how I'm going to wear it. So I may have to adjust the elastic a little bit to tighten up that neck to make it fit a little better for me since I don't want to wear it down. All right, see you at the cutting table. So I'm laying this out and you can see the border print is at each end. So I'm going to have the, the majority of the border along the hem. You can see I stop it right before I hit the selvage edge. And then up at the neckline, I'll have a little bit of the border creeping along the shoulder. I think that'll be really pretty. And I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to lay the sleeve yet, but I'm gonna do the front and the back just like this, and then we'll check out the sleeve. So here's the second piece cut out, and you can see where the border hits on the neckline. So I'm going to do the same thing for the sleeve. So the sleeve will have the border at the top, so the whole neckline will be uh, have continuity, and then the hem of the sleeve will be the center part, and then the hem of the dress will also have more border print. We're all cut out. This is going to be so fast. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew our front and back together along the side seams. I'm searching, so I'm going to search off a little bit of my excess seam allowance, and I'm going to go ahead and search the neck edge and the hem edge of those pieces. I'm also, while I'm sitting at my serger, going to go ahead and sew the underarm of my sleeve, the hem edge of my sleeve, and the neck edge of my sleeve. So I'm going to go do all of those things, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about our next steps. This is going to be so fast. I'm going to have a new cute little top by the end of the day. So I have my front and back sewn together. I'll show you from the inside. And I, I've marked my front with a little safety pin just so I can tell the front from the back because these pattern pieces are so similar. And do make sure that you uh, mark your notches somewhere on your sleeve so you can get the correct side of the sleeve to the correct bodice piece or dress piece. So here they, here they are, just have a little side seam. And that's, so this is what it's going to look like. You're gonna have a little U. And I put my sleeves together. Let me grab one. So here's the sleeve, all surged around the hem and around the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the elastic in the bottom of my sleeve. Like this, that is so cute. This sleeve is nice and full. So you're gonna have a really cute little sleeve. Look at how cute that sleeve is. Love it. Yep. That's adorable. Okay, so I'm gonna do that to both sleeves and then we're ready to pin them in. So let me show you how to pin your sleeve in. Let me find my little notches on my piece here. So we're gonna match our um, underarm seam <clears throat> to our side seam. So underarm seam to side seam, just on top of each other. Put a pin in it and then we'll just um, pull our pieces up to the shoulder, to the neck area, and we're just gonna pin so that our little U's match perfectly. The U of the sleeve to the U of the bodice. This literally is taking me less than two hours. I've, I've only been sewing for, I haven't been down here 45 minutes. So I've cut out and I've gotten this much done in about 45 minutes. 
So we're going to just pin it in like this. And we're going to have, can you see the little U? Here it is, pinned together. So we're going to do that on both sides. And zip around and our sleeves will be in. So I'm going to do that. And then when we come back, we'll do our, we're going to do a neck casing, put in our elastic, pull up the hem, and we're done. Because of the color, I'll just talk to you about thread for a minute. This is a um, green. I don't know how it's coming up on the green with um, golds and tans. And I did not have this green at all. And I wasn't going to go to the store if I could help it. It's a Sunday, by the way. The only store we have close by is Hobby Lobby, which is closed on Sunday. And it's a good 35-minute drive to Joann's from where I live. So I had a gray and I, the gray is completely disappearing from my top stitching. Let me see if I can find my sleeve that I just stick, stuck in here. You cannot see that stitching at all, the gray. It, Cause this is a grayish looking color. It's a grayish green. And then the light part is, I don't know. It's sort of a grayish green too, a paler one, but this gray just disappears. Can't see it at all. So that's what my, I'm top stitching with. At the searcher, I have a grayish blue on there that I'm putting the whole thing together. So that's how I worked out my thread so that it looks intentional and it doesn't look too crazy. Can you, can you see my blue? If the blue shows up more than the gray, I have gray at the needle. So where the um, fabric pulls, it won't, it won't be very visible at all. So here's our progress so far. It looks huge. Look at how big it completely covers me. <laughs> This is the dress, but you can see when it's gathered up. Look at that cute sleeve. I love the sleeve on this. So I'm ready to turn down the top to make my casing for my elastic and to turn up the hem at the bottom and the dress is done. I am going to put a um, tag in it at this point because I want to be able to tell my front from my back. The back's a little bit higher than the front and it just will lay better on the body and it usually will um, lay better at the hem also. So if you, if you get your dress or your shirt on backwards when it's something like this, sometimes the front will be too long or the back will be, like you'll get a sort of an uneven hem at the bottom and that's usually why. So I'm going to mark that with a tag and turn under for my casing and put, um, pull up my hem. Now the pattern has um, you fold under a quarter of an inch and then fold under again for the casing so that you have a completely enclosed casing, which is beautiful. But because I surged mine, I'm just going to have a surged edge and just do a, a straight stitch down for both edges. That's up to you. If you're doing this without a serger, you will go ahead and just sew your 5 8 inch seams together, come back and do a seam finish. This has got pretty straight seams, so you could easily do um, a French seam or a mock French seam, something like that, or even a flat child seam if you want to, or just press it open and zigzag it for, the, uh, for this sleeve here. You'll sew it at your 5 8 inch and then uh, move over a little bit, zigzag next to it and trim out any extra on your sewing machine. And then go ahead and do the fold under twice, fold over your quarter inch, fold in again your inch and a quarter, I believe, for your um, casing to make your casing. Leave a little opening to fish your elastic through. And then the hem is a four inch hem. So they have you turn up a little bit and then turn up your four inches. It's like turn up half inch and then four inch if you want the full hem to get the short length. I'm not, I'm only turning up about an inch because I want to add that four inches length for me. I don't want it to be just below the booty when I wear it. It would be fine for a cute top, but if I want to actually wear this like a dress, I, would, I need the extra four inches. So I'm going to go ahead and do those last few things and it's done and I'll show you how it looks. Here it is. This was easily a morning project. I think it's only 10 in the morning and I've completely finished the whole garment. Fast, easy. I should have a playlist that's just raglan projects because boy, I do love me a raglan top or a dress. They're fast, they're easy, they lay nice, they're flattering. And this fabric is what makes this one interesting. Isn't that cute? I'm considering taking some of the excess. I might make a little belt for it um, for me to wear, I don't know. But love it, love it, love it. Great, very fast pattern. Good beginner pattern for somebody who's new to sewing. And um, if you're a serious sewist, if you've been, or an experienced sewist, this will be a really quick and fun project.
you here. And I just want to say that I'm going to go ahead and link um, a couple more videos that have similar style um, patterns in them. So if you want to see how you can make some other cute little raglan style tops, if it's a style that you like, this little peasant look, or even the t-shirt that I was wearing um, is another raglan pattern that I made. I'll put all those links in the description. And if you're liking my sewing videos, consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Thanks! Thank <laughs> you.